Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Kevin Mullen, Chair of the Green Mountain Care Board, and I'd like to welcome everyone to a public comment period for the next two hours on the filings in the um, QHP, um, both the individual and small group markets by MVP and Blue Cross Blue Shield. And uh, we're happy to hear from any member of the public on their um, concerns generally. Um, the purpose of this is really focused on these QHP filings, but again, I will not shut anyone down who um, starts to uh, speak about something other than these filings. So just doing a check, um, do I have the court reporter, Sonny? Yes, hello, I'm here. Thank you, Sonny. And to do a, a check of all the uh, board members, I'm actually going to ask if each of the board members could introduce themselves, um, going in alphabetical order. Hi, my name is Jessica Holmes, and I'm from Middlebury. My background is economics. Um, I've been on the board for six years. Robin, you're muted. I think Robin is having issues with her speakers again. So I'm going to skip over Robin and, and we'll come back to her. Um, Tom. <laughs> I, I, um, so my name is Tom Pelham. I've been on the board for a little over three years. Um, uh, native of Arlington, Vermont. I was the state's finance commissioner under Howard Dean and tax commissioner under uh, Governor Douglas and a state representative representing Callis, Plainfield and Marshfield. Thank you, Tom. Robin, do we have your sound now? I don't know. Can you hear me? We can. All right. I just needed to pop out and pop back in. Um, Robin Lunge, uh, I've been on the board for almost five years, and my background is in law and policy. I worked for Governor Shumlin and also for the Vermont General Assembly. Thank you, Maureen. Uh, Maureen Yusuper. And my background is in finance. I've been on the board for four and a half years and previously was chief financial officer of several companies. And as I indicated earlier, my name is Kevin Mullen. Um, I live in Rutland, Vermont, and uh, my main background was in small business, but I did serve um, some time at the State House um, along with uh, member Pelham. I spent um, four years in the House representing Rutland Town and uh, 15 years in the Senate representing Rutland County. Um, and I did notice that um, we have the healthcare advocate here and often um, he's very helpful for people who show up to these public hearings and can do some follow up to assist if there's assist needed. And Mike, maybe you could just introduce yourself. Yeah, th thanks. Uh... Chair Mullen. Um, my name is Mike Fisher. I'm the healthcare advocate, and I speak in this moment wholly in my role as running a helpline uh, for Vermonters to access when they have challenges getting the care they need. Um, and so um, I, I, I don't think that there's many members of the public here here to testify as I as I look at the list. Um, but I will go ahead anyway and just say, um, if anybody here or anybody listening to this later um, uh, has an issue getting the care you need and is looking for an advocate to help out, um, it's a service that's available to all Vermonters, and the number is 800-917-7787. Thank you. Thank you, Mike. And just to do a sound check, Christina McLaughlin, um, do we have any members of the public at the physical location? Not yet. Great. Well, we're, you're coming through loud and clear, so if anyone does show up, we'll go from there. So at this point, what I'm going to ask if anyone has joined us um, using their computer or their phone with the Teams app, if they could uh, click on the raise your hand box. And um, after I go through those, if there are any, then I'll just open it up for anyone to speak um, if they're on their phone and just uh, calling in. So um, I do see one hand raised and that is really good. Um, and I see that hand is Don George. 
Hi, Kevin. I, I did raise my hand, but as always, I'm here to listen to the uh, public comment. Okay. For some reason, okay. your hand no, is raised. <laughs> okay, is there any member of the public who wishes to offer public comment? Is there any member of the public who wishes to offer public comment? This would be a, a rare first. So I'm going to move away from the Teams platform, and if anybody is just on the phone, if they could speak up. Um, in any event, uh, we will keep this public comment forum open for the two-hour period that it was advertised. So um, would anybody wish to speak at this time? So I'm not hearing anyone. I plan on sitting here for the next two hours and just to make sure that if somebody gets out of work uh, later than this time period that they have a chance. And um, Christina, I think it's uh, important that we keep the physical location open for that full two hour period as well. Yes, we'll do. I'm here with Susan Barrett, so we will let you know if anyone walks in um, and I'll be by the computer to make sure that if someone speaks up, oh. we're here. Okay. Oh. The the rest of the board, um, it, it is a personal decision that you can make if you wish to sit around for the two hours. I think that uh, Christina, Susan, and I can take the public comment, um, but that's up to you, and uh, um, we'll go from there. I, I knew of one person who had reached out to our office and asked for information about tonight uh, uh, that we gave the information to, um, but that's it. Kevin, somebody does have their hand raised. I see that now, and it looks like uh, Andrea. Hi, yes. Are you are you saying that nobody is here for public comment? I'm so glad I get to be the one. <laughs> <laughs> well. We're going to keep it open till six o'clock, no matter what. But we're glad to that you're here, Andrea, and we look forward to uh, listening to what you have to say. So, whenever you're ready, proceed. And excuse me, this is the reporter. Could you just state your full name and spell it before you give your comment, please? Yes, it's Andrea Todd, A N D R E A T O D D. Um, and if it's if I'm the only one and there's time, I would love to ask you questions if that's possible too. <laughs> we'll see how it goes. <laughs> um, I did write some notes to myself, and actually, I want to put my camera so you, we can all see each other. I don't. There, there I am. <laughs> um, hi. <laughs> hi. Um, so I'm self-employed and 100% um, self-employed, and I'm a sole proprietor, and. Um, I've been doing that form of, of work for the last 10 years, but 10 years before that, I was working up the courage to become self-employed without employer-provided health care. Um, and I think I'm a large majority of people in, in Vermont um, that are only able to get health care through Vermont Health Connect. Um, and so Vermont health, Vermont health Insurance and getting health insurance has been one of the biggest barriers to being a sole proprietor um, and being self-employed, um, mostly because of its expense. Um, it is the biggest expense in my business is, is, is health insurance. Um, but it's also a really big barrier. The Vermont Health, uh, Vermont health Connect it also provides a barrier to self-employed people because of the variability of our incomes and my income. And so while there is the benefit of sending an, a change of income um, form to the Vermont Health Connect, um, for me, that changes so frequently that I would need to be doing my taxes essentially every month <laughs> to be able to get a better read on what's an accurate and fair um, 
a monthly premium payment. Um, so I don't do that because I don't have the resources or the time and I end up filing, filing taxes and then retroactively discovering that I either, and this has happened to me, was assessed a $4,000 fee for having not had, for having had a higher income or was, um, you know, got a, a, a sizable refund for the overpayment of having paid the high premium for the, um, for the year. None of those things are comfortable. <laughs> like it's, it's uncomfortable to pay the high premium rate all year and then to get the, um, the re the refund. And it's really uncomfortable. And as a sole proprietor to get a huge assessment at the end of the year that I wasn't expecting. Um, so this is the biggest expense and I would say the biggest stress for my me as a business owner. Um, Blue, Blue Cross Blue Shield has raised their rates, I would say, I think, and I'm I'm pretty certain you're, you're happy to, I'm, I'm happy to be corrected on this, but in the last three years, it's been a 20% increase that I have seen. And this current proposal is gonna be over 20%, push it well over 20%. Um, and to me, that's just, I wrote the word outrageous here, but it's really hurtful <laughs> that that is how high of the percentage um, that these rates continue to be, because that's just extremely, um, it's it's far greater than the cost of living. I mean, it's it's such a huge increase. And so when you as the board are at, are, are looking at this as a, as like a, well, it's only 4% or it's only 6%. It is a huge percent over time and cumulatively that has a huge impact on me. And to the point where, um, I was gonna get to this later, but one of my, one of where, what I'm constantly looking at is, do I need to, am I gonna be better off not having health insurance? because the expense for my business is so high and I could actually reinvest that money back into my business and roll the dice and hope that I'm healthy, <laughs> you know? Or do I continue to budget, but not effectively because like I explained the, um, the wavering variability of my, of my income, how do I budget for that? You know, it, the, the system is broken. I, I will say from, from as a sole proprietor, um, that is how I feel for health for health insurance. Um, and so the other piece of this, um, the rate increase that I wanted to address is that last year with COVID, I paid a full premium price for my health insurance and couldn't access it, essentially. Everybody was inside. <laughs> we were able, nobody was using health care. And so I feel like Blue Cross Blue Shield got my money all year last year and didn't have to give me anything. They got their raise last year. That's how I view it. <laughs> um, and so I really don't, I don't think that, I don't think there should be any, any increase <laughs> for Blue Cross Blue Shield um, at all. <laughs> um, uh, and so I guess my, my closing statement is that um, I think that this system disadvantages, um, discourages um, those of us making a living out of our on our own, um, and that this rate really disrespects Vermont proprietors that are contributing to the economy. Um, and like I said, are, are leaving us debating, like how, how can we, should we, or how can we make this work? Um, so that, that, that's sort of the, the, I'm grateful for the opportunity to share these thoughts that have been mulling over my mind for the last 10, 20 years as I've been trying to keep myself insured. Um, and I'm hopeful that um, you can see me as a human being and that when you're raising these rates, even a small percentage, you're making it so much harder for me to earn a living and stay living in Vermont and get, and get, get contribute to my state that I love. <laughs> um, and my kind of question, if, I, if I'm able to ask a question, um, I have been really curious to know what health care um, plans the Green Mountain Care Board members have. And so if you would, and, it, and how much you pay a month um, for your health insurance, because um, 
I don't, I would like to have a better sense of if you actually know what this system involves. <laughs> um, so if I can ask that, I, I would love to answer questions that you have to me, but I would love to hear that from you. <laughs> So each of the board members is actually eligible for, because we are um, employed by the state of Vermont, is eligible for the state plan. And so we contribute 20%. Um, my background is as a small business owner, so I know exactly where you're coming from and, and uh, what you're talking about, because for years it was always trying to figure out um, how do you uh, keep that expense down? And I'm old enough that it, um, I actually predate some of the uh, changes in um, the law that uh, um, in some ways um, benefited me because they were discriminatory. So that a, a male paid less than a female and um, age paid, you know, a younger person paid less than an older person. Th those laws have all changed and tried to uh, create some uh, equity within the system. And, and I, I'm taking it from your comments and I'm only going on uh, like this. We normally would never do this in a in a in a public uh, session, but since there's nobody else that uh, has offered to uh, speak at this point, I I just want to uh, keep this conversation going because um, I I take from your comments that uh, you're buying in the individual market that you're the only person in your business, and um, because the uh, small group that the company that you mentioned that you're with, um, they've actually filed for a rate decrease. On the individual side, it is an increase, um, but it, it, there's a um, uh, built-in problematic problem this year in that um, there were changes made at the federal level um, and the ARPA rules and, and laws that were passed at the federal level um, are increasing the subsidies that you can receive as an individual. And so the state of Vermont was one of those few um, states, um, the vast majority of states um, did not have a merged market so that the individual market was separate than the small group market. But Vermont had made a decision um, years ago to have a merged market um, to try to get to um, some sort of scale in a very small state, which is next to impossible to ever reach scale, but to get to some type of scale to offer an affordable um, insurance product. And um, so this year, the cutoff levels for the income um, were much lower in the past. This year, they go up to 400% of the uh, poverty level. And you may get some additional help this year that uh, could be quite beneficial to you. And I just want to make sure that um, I, you uh, so shop so there. I'm so grateful that that's happened. Um, and I think, Mike, I spoke with you on the phone um, that, um, you know, that's that's going to make a huge difference in my savings. Um, yes, I am. an. In, this is sort of my point is. Uh, about being an individual and a sole proprietor. There's so many of us. I think of like the guys that own Christmas tree farms, you know, that just work for themselves. And I'm an educator, a, a, um, a professional educator, a, a learning specialist, private learning specialist. Um, there are a lot of us that can't buy into that small group. And so that's why I'm very grateful that I can actually talk to you today because I think that we get forgotten um, because that individual price is staggering. Um, and I still, I, I, just so just to give you a, a, a little more details, like um, before I did the change of income, like I explained that at the end of the year, I finally did my taxes and did the change of income. So before that I did, I was paying like the full price, the $740 a month for just my premium. And that was with the three thousand, three and a half thousand dollar deductible, but oops, by the way, you still have to pay eight thousand dollars out of pocket expense. So um, the numbers that I want you to hear from me, the reason I want you to hear that is if you're um, in the healthcare, the state's healthcare plan, you don't understand that and see that <laughs> um, because that's like they're paying that for you. <laughs> you're paying into it, but it's cheaper because you're conglomerated into a group, but as a single person trying to make this business work, um, I'm looking at over, that was over $10,000 and that I need to budget for myself. That's like money that I can't invest in my home, 
a car I can't buy. It's a student loan I can't pay off. Um, and the ARPA funds are awesome, but those are temporary, man, <laughs> sir. <laughs> I mean, they're like, that's, I, I don't, I don't think that that I, I mean that would be amazing if I continued to have those those um, benefits, but I know how the system is cyclical, and I don't expect that that's going to be the case. But the rate increase for Blue Cross Blue Shield will still be there when those ARPA funds are gone, um, and so uh, I think that. I understand what you're saying, and I, I think that I and I want you to understand that I have spent a lot of time trying to understand what's happening. And again, as a sole proprietor, um, I'm also the human resources department that needs to understand what's happening. Um, and so, uh, again, that when when I talk to a Vermont Health Connect person and they say, well, if you just filled out the a more regular change of income, I'm like, that is a lot of work. <laughs> That is a lot of work. Um, and so I, I'm glad that I'm the only one and I can have this conversation with you today. So I'm great. I'm grateful. <laughs> yeah. Any program that is income based is uh, problematic. Uh, when I was in the legislature, one of my neighbors is a farmer and um, actually qualified for um, the at the time what was I think it was called VHAP. And um, the problem was they were doing um, the income calculations by quarter. And as you can imagine, a farm has all its income for the vast majority of it in one time of the year. And so it was always problematic for that family. And I was always trying to advocate for them. And so I, I do understand exactly what you're saying. I do think that none of us have a crystal ball. We don't know what will happen with these ARPA, um, you know, enhanced uh, premium credits. Um, I've got to believe that a lot of people are going to be very upset if they're taking taken away, but we did testify before the legislature and um, made it very clear that uh, you know it made sense to unmerge the markets, but it could also make sense to remerge them again if that were to happen. If if what your your worst fear is that um, you know they're going to take away those uh, enhanced uh, credits, then then hopefully the state of Vermont will remerge the markets. Yeah, thank you for for explaining explaining that too and and um and and honestly it it's just a, a treat to, what I love about Vermont. I grew up here and it's it's really nice to be able to have an opportunity to share this with you and and while I'm not in person, it's the best next best thing and I'm in Burlington. <laughs> so thank you. Did you want to share what your business is? Oh yes, um, I'm kind of a learning. I'm a um, learning specialist and and do um, instruction and executive functioning and time management. <laughs> and Andrea, I'm one of the board members now, but I'm finishing in September, so I will be joining those ranks that are going to be going on there. And my husband's self-employed. Um, we won't get any of the benefits. Um, so when these when we're talking about these splits and like MVP going up by 17% and everyone's saying, well, most of the people won't feel that. I'm like, oh, really? It's like, no, some people do feel that. And so I'll yeah. feel it. Yeah, <laughs> and, and I didn't mention this, but I think like, um, I've thought this so long for a long time and, and since I can keep talking, I will. <laughs> um, to reduce the barriers to these, to to entrepreneurs or to self-employed people is a really is a way to boost economic growth. I think it's a huge. Um, I think of like you're taking this leap. I'm sorry, I don't know your name, but um, you're taking this big leap, which is going to be, which is terrifying. Cause I've done it myself. You you're like hoping that it's going to work out, and you're also hoping that you don't get sick. <laughs> you know. Um, and I think that if there were less barriers for people who are, and Vermont is special that way, there are so many of us that are, um, got they've either got side hustles or their side hustle becomes their main hustle, um, that if that wasn't a barrier, we would be, we would be bringing a lot more creativity and a lot more business development to, to the state of Vermont. And I know um, Phil Scott is pro-business, but I wish he was a little more Pro business in healthcare. <laughs> well, 
but we won't get into any politics today. <laughs> That's great. That's great. <laughs> Um, I'm happy to answer any other questions or experiences too while I'm here. <laughs> Andrew, you I was, Go ahead, I Rob. Was, I was just going to chime in and say um, I, I have some friends who are in a similar boat and they experience that same challenge with their business in terms of the income fluctuations. That is driven by the federal tax credits. So it's not state law, it's federal law. Um, so I, I don't have a lot of. Uh, sort of hope that that potentially could change since it's the IRS driving it, but certainly you could communicate your challenges with our congressional delegation. I'm sure that they'd be very interested in hearing about any of those components that are federal. Great, thank you. Yeah, yeah. I, I didn't think of that, but it's not often that there's this in public invitation to talk to the Green <laughs> so I thought I'd start here. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're glad you're here because otherwise we'd be twiddling our thumbs. So it's great to have a conversation. Um, I can share another anecdote from um, a friend who's um, a sole proprietor with a family. And he has shared with me the um, exponentially, you know, $2,000 a month premiums that he needs to pay for his family um, and that that continues to be um, a, a challenging, a, a business burden for him in in a significant way. You know, two two children, a wife, and um, it's it's not it's something that we talk about all the time. Like, how are you how are you making that work? <laughs> um, yeah. Okay. Well, I I I'm so glad I was the only one <laughs> so far. I mean, I guess you might have people until six. I, I wonder what you're going to, what are you going to do until six o'clock? <laughs> Hang out. <laughs> Our friend this Walter is a rare Pelsinger team, is um, here. <laughs> we're, we're used to uh, large crowds at these, so this is a rarity. But uh, it's also the first time we've ever had a negative uh, rate filing. And um, last year uh, was remote as well. And I was very concerned about last year, but we had a good turnout. So I assumed that we would have again this year. Um, but, you know, it it is the middle of summer and it's. Uh, <laughs> I do. And we also had no public comment on either of the meetings that we had. So that was correct. we thought we thought they would be holding out for tonight. Oh, so the previous meetings haven't had any feet, any way in either. Wow. We well, of course, people had to hang out till f eight from eight till five, five thirty every day. So that might have been a yeah. they may have dropped off, but we didn't have any comments. We were hoping they were it, coming it, tonight. It, it gave the healthcare advocate an opportunity to tell us about how he pulled a snake out of his water heater. <laughs> well, I will say uh, just another plug for the self. Uh, we're always working. <laughs> um, but and that's why we tried to bridge this so that uh, um, with the four to six period, if if somebody worked till five, they could still show up later, that type of thing. It's it's always <laughs> tough picking the best times. Yeah. If you do it seven to nine, some people work nights. If you do it during the daytime, then people say that, well, how could anybody show up? So it's it's difficult. But well, I do think that um, with the remote uh, capabilities now that it, it is easier for someone who in the past would have to go to a physical location, it's a little bit easier to be able to just log in and, and share their comments. That's that's 100% why I'm able to be here today. <laughs> so <Yeah>. thank you. <laughs> We're trying to figure out a way as we go back to in-person meetings to be able to have that uh, component where people could still participate uh, remotely and and be able to be a part of the meeting, but still have that physical presence. And and uh, we haven't quite figured that all out yet. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, I work with students, and I'm trying to figure out what what are people going to be most comfortable with. And I I think both options are what people are going to be most comfortable with. <laughs> well, I will um I will let you carry on your meeting, and thank you for the time that I've been able to share. And um, I'll just say, please don't raise those rates for the individuals for Blue Cross Blue Shield. <laughs> One more time. <laughs> thank you, Andrea. Yeah. Thank you. Have a good night. You Bye. too. <laughs>
Is there any other member of the public who wishes to comment? <laughs> Walter, do you do you wish to comment? Well, I was just as I listened to Andrea, I was really just thinking of something that Deb Richter said uh, years ago, and I think it's time and. Again, it's a repeat, and we ask this every year, as the rates go up and the rates go down, as Andrea's right, you know, the ARPA funds and all that. And I think it's time to ask ourselves as a group, as a whole, does Blue Cross exist for us, or do we exist for Blue Cross? And I think that... <clears throat> That's something because next year we're going to have the same rate filing uh, and rates are going to go up, you know, umpteen percent. And then the board is, will have to figure out what Vermonters can handle and what we can't handle. And MVP will be the same and Cigna will be the same. So we're going to go through the whole charade over again. So I'm just wondering, I'm just putting that out there kind of for all of us involved in this to think about, because at bottom, that's in a sense what's going on, as Andrea so, you know, rightly said, the $8,000, the $3,000 deductible, true federal policies, all that, but we, I think we've reached that point. We really can't take too much more. Um, small businesses, working people um, can't take too much more, especially, you know, since our, as I've said before, and Robin has repeated, you know, and he's smiling and I'm smiling at it because we both laugh about it, but, you know, our wages might go up 50 cents a year. Um, I got a 50 cent raise this year and that was it. And that's the first raise I've had in two years. You know, so it's kind of at that point. And how much can we bear of six, seven, eight, nine, ten percent increase along with all the deductibles and co-pays and the plans that keep changing every year, you know. <clears throat> and they get more confusing as we go along. So luckily I'm I actually lived to make it to Medicare, so a, a lot of it, I'm kind of, I've reached that plateau where I'm still, I'm beyond a lot of that, the, the monthly plans, but I'm still affected by it, you know, because the supplement plans will go up, they'll, you know, they'll inevitably go up. The Part, the part D plan has gone up, you know, that faithfully rises every year. So I, I don't wonder, and I know the board can't do much except <clears throat> fill the holes if possible because it's a legislative prerogative and it's a legislature that has to do it. But I think it's something we should think about is do we exist for Blue Cross or does Blue Cross exist to benefit us? And at some point we have to ask ourselves is do we really need an insurance company to do something we could do ourselves? And <clears throat> that just kind of got into my mind as I was listening to Andrea. So <clears throat> I know that you know the board Excuse can't me, do anything this is about the this question. Could, could I just pause for one moment? I've, I've got to close the window. There's suddenly a lot of noise outside. Yeah. Just one second. Somebody always decides to do some sort of mowing during these things. Yeah. Okay. So I've noticed that too, Sonny. Whenever we have a, <laughs> a meeting that the neighbor decides yeah. to do his weed whacking or his mowing. <laughs> yes. <laughs> it's very, it never fails. It's so nice. I finally got to have the windows open. But anyway, yeah. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to interrupt. Go on, please. Oh, I'm pretty much, my, my tirade is pretty much done.
Okay, is there anyone else from the public who wishes to speak at this time? Damn, there are only two of us? Wow. <laughs> yep, it's a different year. It's again midsummer. I just happen to have the day off, which is the only reason I could be here. But <clears throat> I thought you just missed us, Walter. I always do, Jessica. You notice I'm here faithfully every Wednesday. I know, and I we very much live without my, I can't live without my Green Mountain Care Board fix. <laughs> What was that? They they call that an addiction, right? I'm sorry, Walter, but maybe you need uh, something else a little bit more exciting in your life. Now, what could be more <laughs> exciting than the Green Mountain Care Board? Listening to all this about One Care and charts and graphs and <laughs> markets. What on earth could be more exciting than that? All the experience I've had in the world has come down to this. Does anyone have any good uh, stories they wish to share? <laughs> Eric, I see you just popped on. Did you have a good story to tell us? No, not really, Captain. I am, I am moving to Plainfield, which I'm pretty excited about. Um, found an old lefty who was selling us a house at private sale, pre-COVID prices. So pretty excited lucky. about that. But I was just thinking about the public comment as you're talking and like my stress levels are increasing because it's like, oh my God, look at how much ground is going to have to, we're going to have to make up next year. Right. At first I was happy because it's like, oh, these web tools actually worked. And then uh, that we were putting out. And then I was like, oh my God. God, we've lost all the momentum. Next year, so getting folks to pub, do public comment is going to be uh, quite the challenge. Well, hopefully we're all in person next year, Eric. Would be nice. If those that it makes sense for, then we, we really do need to figure out how to do it both ways. Does Maureen, and her, oh, yeah, Maureen, and her, uh, Maureen and her husband will be here next year protesting <laughs> exactly telling you all the pain kevin i i will share that i i went to a lincoln select board meeting recently and um and they had this slick little camera that sat in the middle of the room that turned and focused on each of the members of the of the select board and there was a screen you know for for remote and it actually worked. So maybe, um, Susan Barrett, since you're in the office, maybe you could call the uh, town manager of Lincoln and ask <laughs> what that technology is and how much it costs. <laughs> Don't forget, my budget has been level funded for the last four years. <laughs> you. I'm not sure Sonny needed to put that all on the no. record. <laughs> he was outsiders to his executive director. <laughs> <laughs> I was actually going to say um, it probably makes sense. For, probably makes sense for us to be off the record until someone yes, else absolutely. appears. <laughs> yep. Okay, and then I won't have to strain to hear over the lawnmower as much either. <laughs> you can open your window. <laughs> what town was it, Mike? Town of Lincoln. <laughs> yes, town of Lincoln. And then I'll let them know I know you. <laughs> Maybe you should check and make sure that's a good thing for us, Susan. <laughs> I'm sure it is. They have a good barbecue there, the fireman's barbecue. We like to go to that one sometimes. I've only been through Lincoln. <laughs> Nothing about it. <clears throat> So, hi everybody, this is Kathy Fulton, and if we're off the record, uh, just that, that meeting 
uh, facilitation technology with that camera. I believe it's called an OWL. And I think our information systems manager has looked into that. So, um, Susan, I'll ask Bill to give you a call if he has that information. Because I think we had kind of considered it at one point for some of the, you know, presentations and telehealth office hours. Uh, I think it was a little bit cost prohibitive, but it's, it's some pretty jazzy technology to help facilitate meetings. Great. You're already making me nervous when you say cost prohibitive. <laughs> Level funded budget. Five years? Is it five years or six years? I think it's five years. Yeah, but think of all your saving and travel expenses. That's what we, yeah. we have saved. Yeah. Um, but, you know, the even for um, the hearings and everything, we have saved. And all the, and the environment as well. Right, right Mike Fisher? <laughs> yeah, we'll, we'll talk more. <laughs> we have a we have a we have a uh, we we put something on the calendar, right, Mike? Actually, we we haven't. We should talk about that. Hey, right, we made it to two hours. We did, yeah. and we're at that time. So I'm going to do one more last shout out in case uh, any member of the public wishes to offer public comment before we close this meeting. Hearing none, I would entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. I guess we All have those in one. favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, let the record show it was a unanimous vote. And thank you, everyone. It was uh, a nice conversation for the last two hours. And uh, um, next year, hopefully, we're in person and we have a little bit more turnout. So, and good I thought night. Our I thought our first witness was great. That was oh, so she nice. was great. She should have she stuck around. <laughs> right. It's not. It's not quantity. It's quality. Yeah. Thanks, guys. Bye, guys. Good night. Bye.